you those people the metal guys now i am a huge fan of the laboga mr hector which is this is software from aurora aurora we're looking at today so it's the virtual mr hector i've never had a mr hector but years ago i got an artist deal from laboga and I wanted something very flexible and then went to music store and tested some amps and it was either the alligator or the Mr. Hector. And 
I loved the Mr. Hector, but it was definitely for the heavier stuff and I needed something a little bit more rounded in terms of use. So I ended up with the Alligator 50 Twin. What an amazing amp and that could also rock. Both amps have something very specific, which is ultra precision, rawness, and bamness. They have bamness, bamidity, bamitude. Wow. Then... I got a really good deal on a Rock Force 7, I think, or Rock Force 5 from Fame, which is technically a Mr. Hector, I think, without the rectifier tubes or something like this. It's definitely a spec down Mr. Hector. And I still have it. It's in Studio B now. And uh, Scott Elliott from Chernobyl Studios is freaking in love with it. It's an ultra raw sound, which is why originally in 2009, I recorded the intro track that you heard called Life with my buddy Adrian O'Shaughnessy and uh, based on an idea and riff from Marco Fetter. Thank you, Marco. With the Rock Force from Fame, which is technically a Mr. Hector, but you can't get them anymore. And that was the only amp that could deliver that. Ultra raw. Just the word raw is the sound. Dry. Bamitude. No other amp sounds like that. It's no the other amp sounds that raw. Obviously, raw means it's a combination of low, mid, and high frequencies and a different distribution of those. But that amp has something that no other amp has. For me, it is the raw metal monster. Probably also an insane gent machine. It was around when gent wasn't around. So I'm a huge fan of this. And now there's a plugin. Therefore, I went back and re-recorded that song with that plugin because I know exactly what I want from it because I had it on there. I did re-record the song throughout the years with other amps. And let me tell you, I love my riffs. Soldano is a nice beast, but nothing could get that dude. Nothing could get that sound. So, Scott, leave me alone. Damn it binging me. What does he want? Freaking neighbors. So, nothing could get that sound. The plugin, let me tell you, can get that sound. It has 100% that Mr. Hector raritude. And I actually have a camera on the screen because I, I can point at things. So, we got the Mr. Hector. We got master, trouble middle bass. Y you know what that's like. We got volume and gain for the lead channel. We got clean, which it does. And uh, there's uh, high-low inputs, channel select, a mid switch, which does quite a bit for the, uh, well, for the whole EQ section, but definitely more for the lead. And then we got uh, a bright for gain or for the clean channel. And there's a lot more, but obviously in this, I mean, we, we, we need to be more technologically advanced, so Leslie, if you could, thank you. There it is. Looks exactly like the thing. The tubes glow when you play guitar. Let me show you. Ask Scott Elliott in his very intense video, very in-depth, watch that if you want the more extreme metal settings and, you know, really know how to use this because he goes into extreme depth there. Uh, as he pointed out, the preset that it opens with, the default, why does it already have a shit ton of stuff on it? I don't think it should. So it already has this stomp box enabled. It has three stomp boxes. If you ask me, that amp doesn't need stomp boxes. Yet, I'm wrong about this because for the lead tone in the beginning, I had this unified preamplifier on because I need a little bit, little bit more something else. You have, obviously, a Tube Screamer. I don't think that amp needs it. You have a Tone Shaper, which is kind of neat. But then you have this thing, which I just turned on. I don't even know what it does. And then post effects, why do they already have this very intense EQing going on with this API style EQ? This can do quite a bit. Now you used it a little bit on the clean sound in the beginning, but I literally did I'll zero that out. So what I did in the beginning, I really just pushed the mids a little bit here for the clean and that was it. I also used this limiter, which really got the clean sound to be bam right there but let's turn that off. And then there's a delay and reverb, which I used for the solo. So all the effects you heard on the solo were coming right from it. Delay and reverb, of course, is nice. And believe me, 
the lead sounds you get out of this. Insane. Because it is a very um, mid-focused amp. Beautiful. It's not, it's not doing that mid-cut. Oh, Kohler has... Why, why does Kohler have presets in here? We're going to look at them. Okay. There's a gate, which does its job. And caps. A 312, which is interesting. And a 212. So I went to the 312. It's got, you know, 30s. There's four different kind of caps. A little bit more distance. Went to a dynamic mic. A little bit more distance on the ribbon over here. Uh, and that's what I did. You know, you can move this stuff around here. Ah, oh, up and down is distance. I see. And then you can position it left and right. But, I mean, it was relatively easy to get the sound I had in the beginning. It, very, very straightforward. So let's go with that. Very little gain here. Right off. And let's start it right there. Everything I'm doing is getting directly recorded. I'm not using it later on. So everything I'm doing is actually being represented in the audio. I'm using a pretty standard Ibanez right here. The two guitars you saw in the beginning. or oh, well, three, but the, the rhythm guitars were a little bit special. They're both a little bit leaner in the lower end, but of course the Mayonnaise John Brown is extremely lean in the lower end. That's a modern gent machine. This is your typical DiMaggio, Tone Zone, and Orton, all that stuff, six string Ibanez Prestige RG. So, well, let's start with clean, why not? On the high input. <laughs> Ashy for the clean sound, use this cap. And I did use the limiter, as I said. has that mid honk that the amp has. Comes with a clean channel as well. Uh, if my guitar is out of tune, I just go to tuner, which is of course built in and that's cool. Good. You can get some nice cleans out of it. it. It's not a deluxe reverb, okay? This is not what the amp is made for. So we're going to go back to the 312. We're going to switch the amp to the drive channel. Make sure that our gate is here. High input. So right now, this is without anything. And that's obviously a little bit too not top endy. <laughs> Yeah. 
So you hear some honkiness, you hear some nah, some cocked wah nasal mids. That is a characteristic of the amp. I've got nothing else on, and that is what it sounds like with the EQ up, okay? <laughs> That is why it is brilliant for leads, because it just freaking sits there, but also with a little bit of tweaks, it's insane for brutal stuff. So let's kick in the bright switch, step number one. Mid switch, let's see what that does. Brings the mids up a bit. Let's get the treble up a bit, mids down a tiny bit here. gain is it's literally at nine o'clock So I'm going to go to the cap and crank up this air right over here on the right side. No idea what that big line at the bottom is, but it makes it bigger. And of course, you can also load your own IRs if you so please. You can also turn them off, both of them, and then send it into a wall of sound or whatever you choose. <laughs> If you now want to further sculpt it, use the API if you want that. I don't think you need it. those mids are a little bit too honky for you or too cocked wise tame them i think that is what defines this amp so i'm gonna leave that thing off uh, for me that's pretty much the sound right there
Let's look at some presets and then let's dial in a lead sound because if you ask me, that's the sound, period. Ultra responsive, ultra raw. Obviously, if we get, if we get the gain down a bit here. <laughs> Let's go to Christian and see what he's got. Brutal chugger. And I only have it in mono. Doesn't sound that much different than anything I've just did. So Christian and I, we have the same taste. Vocal because you would run your vocals through this. What is wrong with you, Christian? Do you mean the mids are vocalish because they are? That's probably what you mean. Warm lead, of course, again with his freaking IR. <laughs> Christian, why doesn't it have your warm lead effects? What is wrong with you, Kohle man? Nice, ping pong. <laughs> I, I think it's got some of the nicest leads I can imagine because of that super forward mid push. Doing it even more. That unified thing is really going to do its thing. this in forever but oh my god is this a satriani tone or what That's what I use a lead tone for. That that's a lead tone. The tone shaper was on too. Let's check this out. 
Of course, that all does more, even more mid. Ambient clean, okay. High input. Gotta get some volume here. Yeah, that, that should come out a lot more, Aurora people. Come on. Classic rhythm. Deathcore. At my country, what do I know? Very mid pushy again, genty. They, they like that cocked thing too much. That is way too much mid-forward. Okay, let me set this up for you one more time. Let's see, make it bigger so people can see what I'm doing. Um, so, I'm going to turn all the shit off, okay? Going to go to the 312, going to load up the 30s. Going to go to a dynamic and a ribbon, put both of, them, both of them at a little distance, put this roughly in the middle for some low end, get this air up about five, that's good. Go to the amp, go to high. There we go. Get this stuff roughly center, center EQ in the middle down a bit. Push the mid switch in. No stomps or, uh, on. A little bit more treble, maybe. Bright switch in. Don't go crazy on the low end. On that track in the beginning when I was just playing the Ds, I mean the, the, the low. I'm missing some air here. I don't know why. More treble. I don't know what's happening. There we go. Um, that, it is phenomenal, I think. It is, if you ask me, because I have experience with it for years, one of the most coveted metal sounds in, in my arsenal. I love this for metal because it sits beautifully in the mix. It is rough, it is raw, it's brutal, and most certainly, you might say, oh, it's too many mids. Dude, get the fucking bass and the 
I'm got to sit over here. Get the get the bass and the bass drum underneath, and this thing will just destroy. I have tracked albums with well. The Fame version, which was cheaper and not quite as good as Mr. Hector. But, oh my God, do I long for those sounds. And now I have them a as a plugin. So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying this because they pay me for this video, which they have to because it's a lot of work. I'm saying this because I've used it. I, I have one. I long for that sound. And if I I'm going to grab any kind of metal amp now, I'm going to grab, when it comes to VST, when it comes to VST, I'm going to grab the freaking Aurora Mr. Hector. No question asked because I love its very special flavor. Rawness with that mid push. And for leads, it's freaking insane. I don't know how much this is, but it's a freaking VST, so it's affordable. Get it, try it. I'm sure there's a trial version. It's amazing. I think... The presets might need some work. Always make sure you have a little bit of that top end that you're pushing in on the amp, but then also on the uh, cap with that air knob. It, be gentle with the graphic EQ and the effects and stuff. Do you need those stomp boxes in front of it? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I used one of them for the lead, as I already said. So it's a plugin that's reduced to what it needs. I think in their default, they're already using way too much. Why why make the amp different sound than it actually sounds? But I'm sure that can be fixed because as you can see, mine says beta at the bottom there. So um I, I love the freaking thing. I'm I'm honored that Eric uh, Laboga asked me to do this, that he contacted Aurora, that they got in touch with me. And if you want to see someone else play it and talk about it, check out uh, Christian Kohler's video and Scott Elliott. They're good guys. They play differently than I do. Uh, thanks, Aurora. And we're going to put links below and animals at the end. Me